How's it going everyone? It's Harvey from Weather Sponge 5000 and let's get right into the winter outlook by taking a look at the temperature anomalies, the long term average between 1991 and 2020 for the United States during weak to moderate El Ninos because based on the latest climatology um, forecast models, they're all predicting that we should either lie anywhere between a week um el nino or a moderate el nino and right um and for the years where we experience either a weak or moderate el nino we typically see much colder than average temperatures throughout much of the eastern half of the united states so it's safe to assume that much of the east coast of the united states should experience temperatures that are well below average for this time of the year while if we were to take a look at the western half of the united states we see that temperatures mainly lie around average we do have a small part of the Pacific Northwest that does experience slightly warmer than average temperatures during a weak or moderate El Nino, um, at least compared to the long-term average. So at least for the western half of the United States, the temperatures do become a little bit more variable between winter and winter. We're going to need to take a look at other winter factors to determine if you're going to experience warmer than average temperatures or cooler than average temperatures. But for the East Coast, I could at least confidently say you will experience uh, quarter than average winter which could enhance the possibility you will see more snowstorms now take a look at the precipitation anomalies for um for weak to moderate el ninos compared to the long-term average we do see that it does become interesting because around the ohio River valley as well as even portions of the western um, the northwestern side of the southeast that's where you typically experience less precipitation than usual and it makes sense why because typically during an El Nino we see the jet stream um, the polar jet stream park well to the north most of the time or either well to the south so much of the southeast in a scenario like this would miss out on um, a lot of troughs zooming through because simply during an El Nino, we see a pretty strong ridge located right over the Ohio River Valley. However, it becomes a different story when taking a look at the southeast coast, including portions of the west coast, such as California and Arizona. You experience more precipitation than usual, and this is due to the fact that a subtropical jet typically moves through the south. It's a lot more pronounced, it's a lot more powerful during an El Nino, so you should expect a little bit more troughs and rainfall overall, right? Up along the southeast coast and it's interesting to note that for at least the northeast coast we see that the precipitation anomaly isn't really as significant where we see the precipitation anomaly fall a little bit closer to average so we could still easily see plenty of nor'easters move up the northeast coast since we're relatively close to average when it comes to precipitation and combining that with the fact that we um it is expected that the northeast will experience colder than average temperatures i think that this could be a very active year when it um for the northeast when it comes to those major blizzards that just pound the east coast including the interstate 95 corridor city so northeast you want to watch out for that possibility and for the midwest we do see again the precipitation anomaly isn't as significant but um, we're definitely going to need to take a look at other factors such as the drought monitor and in and other um, patterns that are building in the Midwest to determine if you want to see a little bit more precipitation than average, a little bit less, or maybe right around average, like this precipitation anomaly map is suggesting. So for much of the Ohio River Valley, as well as the northwestern portion of the southeast, expect drier than average conditions, while for the west, the, especially the southwestern coast of the United States and the southeast coast, expect more moist than average conditions. So in general, this is what typically happens during an El Nino winter. We see cooler than average conditions right up along the southeast coast as well as more moist than average conditions because like I said, the subtropical jet is a lot more powerful. It, it moves a lot more northward during uh, El Nino year. So we're bound to experience a lot more low pressure systems moving through the southwest as well as the southeast. And we typically see warmer and drier than average conditions for the Pacific Northwest, the northern Midwest, as well as the 
of Ohio River Valley. However, there is an exception, I'll say, when it comes to warmer than average conditions right around the northern Midwest, because like I just showed you with the uh, temperature anomaly map, um, the, um, typically during a weaker El Nino, we tend to see the temperatures a fall a little bit closer um, to cooler than average right around the northern Midwest, or at the very least, right around average. So I don't expect the warmth to move this far east. I do expect Minnesota and the Dakotas to be a little bit closer to average when it comes to temperature this winter and experience an average amount of snowfall, maybe a little bit less. Um, because like I said, during an El Nino, the jet, the polar jet stream is a little bit too far north to bring the troughs um, southward towards this area. But I'll say that um, when it comes to this area being warmer than average, it's, it's less likely during an El Nino scenario like this. So definitely keep that in mind. But for the Pacific Northwest, expect warmer than average conditions and drier than average conditions. Because um, part of the reason, due to the graphic I'm about to show you right now, which is a drought monitor for the United States. Let's take a look at that right now. So here's a look at the drought monitor over the United States right now. And we do see that the Texas area, as well as portions of Louisiana and Southern Mississippi, you guys are under a severe drought and portions of Northern Midwest as well, where Iowa, Minnesota, um, portions of Nebraska and Kansas are also involved and portions of the Pacific, uh, of the Pacific Northwest as well. So there's definitely something we're going to monitor over the next few months. And the reason why I show you this is because when we see a drought, um, when we're seeing a drought currently, then it's then there's a good possibility that it'll last um, for several more months because droughts go, don't go away overnight. Typically, when there's a drought, of course, there has been a pattern that has been built over that um, drought stricken area to where uh, moisture is somehow avoiding that area. And it's very well possible that this could continue on into the winter. It's very difficult for a drought to go away because of course, with not a lot of moisture along the surface during a drought, that provides the uh, atmosphere a lot less water vapor to work with and create um, condensation and create more convective activity. And as a result, we see this uh, drought typically last for months. So if this drought were to continue into the winter time frame, then you should certainly expect drier than average conditions right over the western half of the Mississippi River Valley, as well as the Missouri River Valley, which is right around the northern Midwest. And expect the drought conditions to potentially maybe continue for the Texas and Louisiana area. That would go against what typically happens during a uh, typical El Nino, where we see more moisture moist and average conditions but there is that possibility that maybe this winter could be the exception if we see this ridge parked over the texas louisiana area um and and pretty much prevent troughs from being able to penetrate the southeast so um, I do expect that in a lot of these drought stricken areas, especially the Pacific Northwest, expect this winter to potentially be drier than what you typically expect, pretty much based on what you've already been experiencing for the past several months with this drought. Another thing that's good to take a look at is the Pacific North American Oscillation and pretty much what this is is a pattern that determines whether or not um, the western half or the eastern half of the United States experiences pressures that are lower than normal or pre uh, air pressures that are higher than normal. And what typically a higher than normal pressure provides is a lot more drier conditions, a lot uh, much more warmer conditions and prevents a lot of snowstorms from being able to develop or move in if you're under a strong ridge while during if you're under a strong low the opposite happens you're of course bound to experience much more storm systems much more snowstorms and colder than average conditions because typically a stronger low would encourage stronger north uh stronger northerly flow that would push the troughs a little bit further southward and encourage more snowstorm development and take a look at the differences between a positive and negative phase during a positive phase we see a large ridge dominating the western half of the united states which typically brings warmer and drier than average conditions over the western half while cooler than average conditions over the eastern half but during a negative phase the opposite happens a pretty large low is parked over the pacific northwest 
bringing much more storms and cooler than average conditions, while for the east coast it's a lot warmer and drier than average. It's, um, we experienced a lot of the negative phase this past winter, which is a big reason why the northeast or much of the east coast in general didn't experience many snowstorms last winter. This ridge was just very strong, preventing a lot of troughs and the cold air from being able to penetrate and bring snow to the northeast area. So, based on what we've been seeing with the latest um, computer model predictions, we see that we're expected to enter a negative phase right around the September 27th, the week of September 27th, before entering a positive phase for much of the month of November and entering November, before we get back down to a negative phase. However, it's interesting to note that take a look at the trend here um, during the month of November. We see that the line is going over the zero degree threshold, which means that we're slowly, um, it, as of right now, the computer models expect to slowly enter to a positive phase at, by the time we approach December. And you can probably tell that these patterns last for maybe a week, um, anywhere between two to four weeks. So it, um, for the month of December, we very well could be for a, um, in for a rough start when it comes to snowfall over the eastern half of the United States if this forecast remains where it wants to bring a positive phase um, which would bring colder and snowier than average conditions for the eastern half of the United States. We're going to need to see if this keeps up but I'll say at the very least for the early part of the winter more like December and potentially into January we could be in for more snowfall and colder than average conditions. At least for the eastern half of the United States, while the western half experiences warmer and drier than average conditions. Now, take a look at the NMME climate, um, climatology model, um, which is pretty much a computer model that combines most reliable American models into one model to give it uh, the best and potentially the most accurate representation of what's going to happen in the long term future. We do see, take a look at the temperature anomaly. Much of the western half of the United States, including the northern Midwest, is, ex is expected to experience temperatures slightly above average this winter while for the southeast including um, portions of the mid-atlantic the temperatures should fall a little bit closer to average however based on the fact that typically during a week to moderate el nino we see much colder than average conditions for the eastern half of the united states i lean a little bit more to the southeast and northeast experiencing cold, uh, colder than average winter this year based on the other factors we just saw um that comes with a weaker el nino but for the western half, I'll say that this temperature anomaly is fairly accurate as well as the northern Midwest. It should potentially either be closer to average this winter when it comes to temperature or slightly above average in a lot of these areas. When it comes to the models forecasts, um, when it comes to precipitation, it very well mimic, uh, mimics what typically happens during a weaker to moderate El Nino. We see much more storms than average right around the southeast coast of the United States um, and even extending to the mid-Atlantic. While um, the Pacific Northwest, as well as portions of the Ohio Valley, experience drier than average conditions. So I will say that this probably a fairly accurate representation of what's going to happen this winter when it comes to precipitation. I expect much more storms in the southeast and I'd even say that this will extend to the southwest as well because if we were to extend this a little further into the month of March we do see that now California gets involved with more precipitation than usual so I will say that the, precip the higher than average precipitation should also extend to the southwestern portion of the United States based on what expected during the month of March as well as the fact that it typically happens during an El Nino in general so make sure to be prepared for that over California and other surrounding areas along the west coast so here's my overall winter outlook for 2023 and 2024. So for the Northeast Coast, I expect much more winter storms than usual, much more nor'easters than usual, because typically during a moderate to weak El Nino, we see much colder than average conditions. And combined with the fact that we typically see troughs take this sort of trajectory where they move up along the Southeast Coast and might have the potential of encountering just enough instability for a nor'easter to look to develop i do expect that we should see much more winter storms than usual right up along the east coast so definitely prepare for that 
Corner and drier than average conditions for much of the Midwest. Um, you should still experience some snowstorms. I don't like. I don't expect it to be as large of a magnitude as you're used to thanks to the fact that during an El Nino we see a pretty large ridge parked over the O'Hara Valley as well as the fact that some of these areas are currently in a drought which will only exacerbate the uh, lack of precipitation this winter over this area and moving a little uh, moving our focus a little bit further southward I'm expecting it to be a little bit more stormy as well as quarter than average we typically see more, uh, more pronounced jet stream dips during a uh, weaker El Nino and there is a higher chance of snow in the south so if you're hoping for a snowstorm right around the southeast and this could be the winter where you could get your um, um potentially your first snowfall in potentially a long time and taking a look at the southwest i'm expecting more storms than usual the subtropical jet is very strong during an el nino so make sure to prepare for heavy rainfall as well as heavy snowfall in the higher elevations of the west coast and then taking a look at the pacific northwest i'm expecting it to be warmer and drier than average because the polar jet stream is well to the north of you guys during an El Nino, and that's what's expected this winter. So this is my 2023-2024 winter forecast. If you want even more in-detail forecasts regarding the winter in your area, such as the exact snowfall, estimated snowfall amount, as well as whether it's going to be colder or warmer than average this winter, just make sure to comment down your SIP location um, below if you're interested, and I'll make sure to give you guys a more in-detail look at what you should expect this winter in your specific area so make sure to comment down below if you're interested but yeah guys that's it for now guys and i thank you guys for watching and make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content and winter forecasts like this my snowfall forecast should be coming relatively soon so you're definitely going to want to stay tuned for that if you're wondering um how just how powerful this winter will be when it comes to snowfall but anyways guys i thank you guys for watching and make sure to subscribe for more